All right, so today we're gonna to get into making the cavatelli dough. And as with anything, if you have any questions when we're finished with this video, please just send all emails to chefstyleboston at chefstyleboston.com. So I'm gonna use start off with the scale, and the reason scale is best, because anytime we put the bowl on it and throw the ingredients in, we can zero it out instead of taking everything on and off, and we're still gonna get those exact measurements. So we're gonna start off with a bowl here on our scale, and we're gonna measure out whole milk ricotta cheese, 150 grams. But listen, guys, for best results, don't use anything that's fat free or low fat. If you're gonna make cavatelli, go in, go all in, or just don't even watch this video. I mean, but now that we have the ricotta down in here in the bowl, we're going to uh, we can zero that out if we want. You can see here, I just push that one. We're gonna get our olive oil. I'm gonna take in, and we're gonna get anywhere between about 30 to 40 grams. And of course, I always throw a little extra if you've taking the time to get a good olive oil because why not? It's not gonna hurt. It's just gonna make your cavatelli turn out a little more supple. It's just gonna have a, a amazing flavor. And of course your olive oil is gonna add a little more acidity to it as well. We've got the olive oil in there. We're gonna give a good pinch of salt here. I have diamond crystal kosher salt. We're gonna use about a teaspoon. Honestly, I use closer to two teaspoons in my recipe. Uh, go ahead and give that a good little mix around. Make sure everything is incorporating nicely. And once we get all of that in, we're going to go ahead and get this scale set back up because we're going to need to measure some water into it as well. All right, so now we have our scale set back up. We're going to go ahead and measure out 30 grams of room temperature water. Get that in there. Give that a good mix around. Make sure that the water is fully incorporated because once we have this mixture all fully incorporated, we're going to go ahead and start adding our flour and semolina little by little. Now, if you don't have semolina, that's fine. Just go ahead and use a regular all-purpose flour. Make sure you have a good brand. Specifically, I like to use King Arthur. So here I've just paddled out, you know, a couple scoops, roughly one quarter to one and a half cup at a time. I've done the same thing with equal portions of my semolina. Now that I have it in there, I'll go ahead and give that a good mix. And you're just going to continue this process over and over as you slowly incorporate the flour, your semolina. And you're pretty much wanting to get it nice and hydrated. Now your hydration is going to take a little longer than it would be with a water-based or even egg-based pasta because the amount of fat that you have with the ricotta and the olive oil See how I dumped it out? It Right here it looks very crumbly, but as you start to squeeze it and apply pressure, you're going to see that it comes together and starts to form what you would consider a more traditional dough. So now we're just going to slowly start working the dough. We're going to start kneading it. Now I like to use a, a wooden board here just because it helps to pull off any additional moisture, but because of the nice fatty content we have of this dough, we're not going to really have too many problems with this sticking. So now you can see we've slowed the video down a little bit. I'm just using the heel portion of my the palm of my hand. I'm going down and away on the board. I'm not pushing straight down into it because that's going to tear the gluten strands, the gluten network that we're spending all this time developing to make sure that when we do cook the pasta, because it is such a, a supple and delicate pasta, that we are going to be able to maintain the structure. And we can only do that by this continual kneading to, to build the gluten network. And again, gluten does not just exist in flour alone. You have gluten and gliadin, which are your two different structures that are going to come together through this process and to give us the structure we need to keep everything together. Now to be honest with you, typically I would have added this uh, the Parmesan Reggiano at the beginning of these steps in with the ricotta and the olive oil at the very beginning, but I forgot and it's never too late to add cheese in. So I'm going to go ahead and microplane about 30 to 50 grams of this fresh Parmesan Reggiano on top of it. And when I'm finished, I'm just going to start the the working of the dough the same way we did at the beginning and just make sure that, that the cheese is nice fully incorporated and that I don't have any lumps. So when I do start to roll the dough out to make my dough ropes, we are having a single rope and it's not falling apart because of the grittiness of the, the cheese. So now you're just going to continue kneading the dough. You're just going to continue to work it, making sure that you have the structure that we're continuing to evenly distribute the, the moisture that's in there while simultaneously working to develop the gluten. Now we're good to go. The ball's looking good. We're going to either cover that up with some plastic wrap or just set it in a plastic container off to the side. Let it hang out for at least 30 minutes so that gluten can relax. And then you're going to be able to get this dough laid out flat, get your bench scrapers, clean your surface off. So when we do go to lay that fresh dough ball out there, we're not getting these old dry clumps mixed up in with it. Right? We don't want to mess up that amazing texture that we've just spent all this time developing because the end of this meal is going to be delicioso. But you already know though. Cheers, guys.